602. Roll call. Oscar Salinas present. Marietta Cantu present. Mary Atlantic present. Camila Alex Cantu present. Claudia Ochoa present. Thank you, Ms. Ochoa. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Do we have public comments? Uh, we don't have any public comments at this time. Can I entertain a motion for approval for adoption of resolution 2020-04 to authorize expenditures by superintendent? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Adoption of resolution 2020-05 to declare public purpose to pay employees during the district closure. Also moved. Second. Coach, uh, Doc, I'm sorry. Can, can you explain that a little bit so that the public can understand? Uh, during the time of closure, because um, funding is going to continue to flow from the state, all employees will be paid, professional, paraprofessional, auxiliary. Um, what this resolution will allow is that for any essential staff, auxiliary or paraprofessional classified staff that is called in, they will be paid a premium pay. Uh, only for those essential staff that come in will get the premium pay. This resolution here, uh, the way it's written is for time and a half, and the board can approve it that way, or the board can approve half, which would mean, for example, if an employee is earning $10 an hour and we approve it at half, that employee would earn $15 an hour. If we approve it the way it's written right now at time and a half, that employee would pay the $10 that they usually get and then another $10 and $5, so it would be $25. So the board needs to make a decision on are we going to approve the resolution at time and a half or are we going to approve the resolution at half? One of the things that we need to look at is that the amount that we will be, uh, the amount of time that we will be in school closure is indefinite at this time. And so it is the board's decision, but I would recommend maybe doing the half uh, and we can change it later, but that's still the board's decision whether you wanna do time and a half or whether you wanna do half. That half is still paying employees more than the regular. And the reason this exists is because all since all employees are going to be paid, it's only fair that those that are called in to help would get a little bit more. Can, I don't, you, tell, would be the half. can you let us know for the public, because I know people are, are watching online, which are the people that are going to be needed? Like, for example, transportation, police. Uh, the plans that we have now, because we do have a food distribution program, we're going to be having 11 sites that are distributing food. Uh, we're going to need anywhere from uh, eight to 10 uh, child nutrition program staff at each of those sites. We're going to need a custodian at each site, and we're going to need a police officer at each of those sites. We're also looking at immediately beginning on Monday, 20 bus drivers that are going to be manning uh, 20 bus hotspots that are gonna be located throughout the community so that students in the more remote areas can have access to Wi-Fi for the work that they're going to be required. So we have that. Uh, we're going to have um, probably two to three mechanics that are also going to be called uh, needed to maintain the buses that are going to be there. We're gonna have a couple of roving custodians that are gonna be working at uh, offices. And so that is, uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anyone cabinet are, review. Are we, are we gonna have any uh, custodials to be disinfecting the classrooms? And um, our custodians work this week to disinfect. 
whenever we do make the decision to bring kids back, we will do another disinfection process throughout the district. At that time, we might need to bring some. So those that I mentioned are the ones that we're planning to bring in on Monday. At any one time, there could be an additional need that we have, and so we might need to bring maybe more bus drivers, uh, more custodial staff. One of the things that we have not planned yet because uh, TEA is still working out how to address is the needs of special education students, especially those students that are most vulnerable for infection, uh, and that's some of the unit students. So we're want, waiting to get more information from TEA on that. That is a group of students that we may need to bring in to the self-contained units. So if that is the case, then we would need some of those instruction assistants, additional bus drivers, and additional custodians. So there's certain situations like that that are still pending, and um, that's why we have we have notified directors that even though we're planning for the, what I just described, there might be additional needs as we move through the two weeks. Yes, thank you, Ms. Ochoa. Uh, for the, twin, the 20 buses that are going to be deployed at remote sites in our district, we're also gonna have a, technology, a technician um, to address issues that might come up. Dr. Sainz, how will, we, how will we be selecting these employees, these essential employees? These employees are going to be selected by the directors. And they have different criteria that they will be using um, to select the employees that they will be bringing in. Will there be like a rotation basis? Or? It depends. Um, and then, of course, we have planned for two weeks. So for these two weeks, um, I know the uh, Child Nutrition Program was going to rotate. If we extend to longer periods, that might be more uh, employees are in the rotation. But right now we've planned for two weeks and the directors will choose their staff. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that the closure is till the end of the year? No, right now the closure that we have announced is until April 3rd. However, we know that the COVID-19 situation is a very fluid and very changing situation. <clears throat> Every day the CDC, the Texas Health Department, TEA come up with new information and new recommendations. Um, the cabinet is uh, has a daily conference with the commissioner, just like with other agencies. And so we're always gathering information and making decisions. So it is not, we do not, the two week closure is our initial closure that might change. We might need to go into uh, a level six. We might need to remain at that level longer. We're just going to have to continually assess the situation and plan ahead as far as we are able to with the information that we get. I know with the needs assessment, uh, personnel is as needed. I know today I met and elaborated that they're going to be adjusting according to their needs in their department. In the last agenda item, we are going to... Um, have a short presentation by Ms. Uh, Magda Villarreal on the instructional plan and also Ms. Reyes on the food distribution. And then whatever questions uh, come up, we'll answer them also. So we are going to give you a little bit of information on the instructional plan in the one of the later agenda items. So we do have a motion in a second, but I do need uh, to what direction we want to take. So my motion, I don't know who made the motion, but for me it would be to proceed as per superintendent's recommendation. Uh, motion first. For approval. According to superintendent. So I'll go ahead and, 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 and amend my motion as recommended by our superintendent. Thank you. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approval to waive copay deductible for testing to diagnose COVID-19 for the La Jolla ISD self-funded medical insurance plan members for in-network and out-of-network services when medically necessary and consistent with the Center for Disease Control CDC guidance and increased options for medication. So move. Uh, I'll second. Can you expand a little bit, Doc, on that? Uh, this item. Uh, waives the deductible for our employees in case they need to um, get be tested. 
So it waives the deductible for um, in-network and also out-of-network. And even though the out-of-network might be a little bit more costly, costly, we all are hearing how difficult it is to get a test and we do not want to make it even harder our on our employees, which is why we did uh, in-network and out-of-network. And then, so it does that for employees and then it also includes in, um, increases the options for medications. Sometimes uh, employees can only get a prescription for let's say 30 days. This will allow them to get prescriptions for up to 90 days so that they don't have to make multiple trips to the doctor. Uh, Dr. Sanchez, just to also clarify that one, it will also include anyone who's on an employee's health plan. So you are a parent and an employee and you have children, that extends to that plan for the whole district. So it's not just the employees, but it's anyone and their family. The clinic will be open. I think that there's a flyer that is it going to be regular uh, clinic hours are going to be uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 12 and 1 to 5 p.m. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So we will have our employee clinic available to our staff also during the, the two-week closure. Any more discussion? I have a motion, I have a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Presentation to Board of Trustees to, on measures to be taken regarding instruction and related services to the district. Short closure, I have a motion. I'll move. I'll move. Second. 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 Discussion. Yeah, this is a presentation. Ms. Uh, Mark is going to give you uh, some information on the instructional plan that we have. And one of the things that the commissioner has uh, said is that as a, as a district, we need to uh, provide evidence, at least during this time, until we are told otherwise, that in order to continue the flow of funds, we have to provide evidence that our, our students are being provided with instruction at home. Uh, we can do it on a high-tech basis, which means online, or a low-tech basis, which is uh, packets, and we have a combination, and Martha's going to talk a little bit about that. Well, good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, we clearly understand that our main priority is the safety of our students and our staff. And like Dr. Science just mentioned, we do need to provide some kind of form of instruction to our students at home. So you do have a, a folder there right in front of you. Can you take that out? And there you'll find our instructional resource plan. If you could turn to page two, we're gonna start off with our communication strategies. And uh, this is not something that, that basically, this is the way I organized it. If you go into our TA website, our commissioner, uh, Mike Marath, basically gave uh, put out a template for us, and that's exactly what I followed in order to develop this plan. And then, obviously, with the help of our executive directors and our coordinators, we were able to develop our packets that are aligned to our texts that our students are supposed to be learning these next couple of weeks. So if you look at the communication strategies, number one, it's very simple. Our, we're gonna go ahead and post this plan in our district website. Number two, we're gonna go ahead and develop a video that is gonna assist our parents and our students on how to log in into the Google Drive. And uh, again, that's gonna help our parents, teachers, and students. If you go to number three, we did have a meeting with our principals today. It was a webinar and we were able to communicate this plan with our principals. That way they clearly understand what needs to be done with our principal, with our teachers, our students, and our parents. Any questions that they might have, they could go ahead and email us and we're gonna guide them through uh, any issues that they might have. Number four, they're gonna go ahead and communicate this plan through a staff meeting. 
And that staff meeting is gonna be staggered throughout the day, and I'm gonna go ahead and communicate that to you all later on in this presentation. You have number five and number six, very similar. Basically, we're gonna go ahead and provide those links to our students and our teachers. That way they could go ahead and activate and utilize the Google Drive where we uploaded all the resources that our kids are gonna utilize. And that way teachers can actually upload the lessons into that Google Drive in itself. And then you have number seven that just basically outlines that our Outlook email is what we're gonna utilize to communicate with our teachers, okay? And then number eight, just letting our principals and everybody know that we're gonna be communicating any updates through various means of communication. Questions about the strategies that we're gonna be utilizing? You wanna uh, share with uh, my colleagues how you're, they're gonna have like short videos uh, yes. to support the parents? Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and upload uh, just different videos to assist our parents. For example, we're going to upload videos on Imagine Learning, on how to access Imagine Learning. We're going to upload a video on Reading Renaissance, on how to access Reading Renaissance. So we're going to be doing all of that to be able to guide our parents. And actually, our students are very well versed, so they know how to do that. But that way, our parents can actually know how to also assist our students as well. Okay. This is for, for every grade level? This is for every every grade level, except, for example, Imagine Learning is being utilized at the elementary and middle school. So if it applies to them, then they could go ahead and, and obviously okay. view it and, and be able to see it, right? And because it applies to them. High school, it's different. They use Edgenuity. So that would be a different thing that we would have to uh, work with our parents in that area. Okay. The next one is support systems available at the district. We have technology resources that are available. And as you can see, we have Imagine Learning and it depicts there what level, elementary and middle school. And we've actually added the link. That way it could actually just guide them directly to uh, Imagine Learning. We also uh, went ahead and purchased Myon, which is something that's very new for our campuses, which is uh, at the middle, at the elementary, all elementaries have access to that. Uh, middle school, we have one campus, which is Trevino Middle School and West Academy. Myon is a, uh, campuses will be able to, and students will be able to have access to online uh, books, newsletters, uh, projects. So teachers will be able to uh, actually push activities to our students from home and the kids will be able to do them and teachers will be actually be able to see what kind of work the students are doing and uh, be able to give them grades regarding uh, this Mayan database that we just purchased, okay? Uh, number three, uh, all students will have access to Reading Renaissance at home. For most of you that have students uh, or kids uh, here in our district enrolled in in elementary or middle school, as you all know, Reading Renaissance, we cannot access that at home. We're gonna, uh, you know, open it up. Parents and students, we're gonna, they're gonna be able to read books and test at home as well from now on. That way, that's something additional that we put in our plan. And then Edgenuity, like I just mentioned, uh, that's something that's utilized at the high school level, and that's for ELA only. So we've added the links there. That way the students can go directly to uh, Edgenuity and to the course, be able to do the assigned work. And also for educators, that way they could go ahead and assign the work in itself and be able to check the work that the students are doing. We also have Sprint 1 Million, as you all know. We've gotten a lot of uh, devices from Sprint 1 Million. So that is something that our students are gonna be able to utilize in order to do this online work that has been assigned. And they're working with us and uh, we're going from 10 gigs to 20 gigs. So uh, I do wanna thank Ms. Lian because that's something that she actually uh, worked on to be able to help us to gain those extra 10 gigs for our students, okay? Um, as you can see on page three, we still have to work on the distribution of some devices. So that's something that we're gonna work on next week. When students come and pick up their uh, student packets, we're also gonna make sure that we distribute these devices that, have, that, that we haven't uh, issued out yet. 
we're going to make sure that we give it to our students. Okay. What's the protocol if they don't come for their packets? Will we be going to them or how is that? That's something that we talked about. Actually, Mr. Modin offered to assist us with that, with the social workers and the face liaisons. So we're, as, as they're coming and picking up the packets, we're going to be highlighting. And those that, do, that did not pick up the packets, we're going to go ahead and follow up with the face liaisons and going to go and deliver. Ms. Varial, I'm sorry, yes. as far as the online communication, will they be using Google Drive or Google Classroom? Well, that's something that uh, we talked about, uh, Ms. Cantu, because the best thing is to go through Google Classroom, mm -hmm. but it's, it would be very difficult for our kids because they're not very well versed with Google Classroom. So we're going to go ahead and upload it to the Google Drive, and then through the Google Drive, they're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and access it through Skyward. So we're going to go ahead and put that in a video uh, as well to guide our kids through that, as you know, because it would be a lot more difficult for them to do the Google Classroom. Yes. Okay. So um, going back to the Sprint 1 million, as you can see, there's some uh, devices that we need to issue out. So we'll be working on that next week with our high school campuses. Uh, we do want to thank uh, our school board because we are get, we do have the Wi-Fi on wheels, and that's going to help us with the 21 hotspots. They're going to be out there. The reason I say 21 is because we have the mobile tech lab. So um, we've been working fast and furious to uh, install all the different uh, devices that need to be installed on the buses to get this going. As soon as we found out that we were going to close the uh, you know, we're going to have a closure. We started working on this. So we will uh, have these 20 buses up and running by the end of this week. And uh, if you turn the page, you'll see the buses. They're going to be utilized and the neighborhood streets. However, there's going to be an update to this because it says Monday through Friday from 12 to 5. We want to be a little bit more specific. We want to tell the parents exactly uh, where they're going to be and what day out of the week they're going to be at their neighborhood. Instead of Monday through Friday from 12 to 5, we want to say they're going to be uh, on Monday, they'll be at Pinto Road from 12 to 2. Do you see that? That way they know that they, the students can do their work from uh, at that point in time on Monday. Okay? And they'll have access to Wi-Fi. If you turn the, if you go all the way now to page six, we have different responsibilities for different individuals. We'll start with central office. And the first one is mainly just to maintain clarity amongst all different departments. Uh, that way we can ensure that we uh, provide everybody what they need. Uh, number two, to work collaboratively with everyone to provide solutions to any issues that might come up. Number three, to ensure that we're providing instructional resources, resources that are aligned to the text. It would be very easy for us to just do star packets and issue them out, but that's not what we stand for. We stand, uh, what we truly believe is, what is it that our kids are supposed to learn? Let's look at our text, let's uh, really analyze it, and let's go ahead and design some lessons that are gonna assist our students. So uh, number four, it communicates with all stakeholders to ensure that the communication is accurate and effective, okay? The next one is principals and assistant principals. Basically, their responsibility is to post their plan in their campus website, um, obviously provide those resources to their students, uh, ensure that the communication is occurring as well between the parents, the students, uh, on a, and teachers on a weekly basis uh, and communicate with the parents as necessary. This is very important because one of the things that the commissioner is asking for is that how are we ensuring that the kids are being successful at home with the resources that we're sending. So uh, one of the things that we're asking principals to do in this plan is to pick up communication logs because teachers do need to call their students to see how they're doing with the resource packets or with the work that has been assigned to them. We also, aside from all the work that's being assigned to our students, we also wanna make sure that we don't lose that 
that connection with our students and it's a time to find out at a different level how are they doing how is the family doing and uh, just to check up on them at a personal level too okay number five verify that the teachers are inputting their weekly grades as well through the submission of those contact logs and that will be done through email okay uh, and the teacher as you can see you can see it there they will be posting uh, the work through the Google Drive for students. They will be using different methods of uh, through those technology apps that we have available. And then uh, obviously inputting the grades in Skyward and making those parent contacts uh, on a weekly basis. Okay, and then emailing those parent contact logs to the principal. The next page that you have there is actually uh, for our high schools. We can't forget about our students that are in taking a college course with STC and our teachers who are also faculty members at STC. And you have the procedures there for our uh, teachers and also for our students. One of the things that we want to make sure is that they have those electronic devices because they, uh, STC has moved to obviously everything online as well so we gotta uh, check that every single student that is taking a dual course it, uh, that and is enrolled with STC has an electronic device okay and then the last page you have uh, there basically is the schedule for uh, the distribution okay so one of the things that we spoke to our principals about is that uh, day one would be next week on Monday, which is the 23rd, and that's when they're going to bring in their staff to communicate the plan. They could share the plan already with them, but they, they're going to go ahead and bring in their staff to communicate this plan and actually gather all the materials and organize the materials for distribution, which is day two, which is on Tuesday. Uh, print shop, as we speak right now, they're working fast and furious as well to make the student packets for middle school and high school because we're providing that online resource but we're also providing a hard copy just in case that they don't have those electronic device or the electronic device to go uh, online. So um, with that said, somehow we need to organize things for pickup and that's gonna happen on Monday. We do know that there's, we cannot have more than 10 individuals in one room. That's a recommendation. So what we're saying is bring in one grade level at a time or two grade levels at a time and have a conversation with them about the plan, how things are gonna work on Tuesday and then give them time to organize the materials and then let them go, then schedule, stagger it, right? Then schedule the next two grade levels to come in, have a conversation with them, have them organize the packets and put it out there and make sure that everything's organized for day two and then let them go, okay? So basically you're staggering your meetings with your, your staff and they're helping you organize the, the packets for pickup. At the elementary, we did not do any student packets because they have consumables, they have student consumables. So that's what the elementary teachers are gonna be coming in and helping with. So for Magda, I'm gonna go ahead and go to her desk and gather her student workbooks and we're gonna get them ready and we're gonna put them in, this is a kinder table and we're gonna label it her name, Magda. And then so for Tuesday for pickup, kinder is scheduled to be there from 8 to 11.30. It's just gonna be a little drive through type of thing. So parents says, I'm here for Magda's uh, you know, student packet. We gather her stuff and give it to them because parents will not be allowed to get off of the vehicle. Okay? Is that third through fifth as well? And that's scheduled, yes, it's, it's scheduled for, for, yes. You have the schedule on page eight. So um, as you can see for day two, we have uh, pre-K and K scheduled from eight to 11.30. Pre-K scheduled in the pickup area and kinder uh, scheduled at the bus loading area. So we will have two pickup lines, okay? And then we have staff that is assigned to help and assist as well, okay? I was referring to the consumables. Those oh, are I'm 30, sorry. 30 yes, 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 
yes, Ms. Cantu. So they also have student workbooks. And at the middle school, we did do PEP. So uh, any questions that you all might have at this time? How are we getting this information across to the community? Okay, that's a good question, Mr. Cantu. Um, I know that we're working with Ms. Uh, Blanca Cantu, and that's gonna be posted on our district webpage, and that way they could go ahead and know that the distribution time for each uh, level, elementary, middle, and high school, so we're working on that to ensure that they know when when it's occurring. Yes. Are the teachers gonna help out making, well, of course they gotta make contact with the parents to make sure that they, I well, mean, maybe that could Monday, be another way. Right, they're coming, yes, in they're coming in on Monday. They're coming in on Monday to help with the, you well, know, gathering the materials and then organizing, yes. We're not, as, as a matter of fact, we haven't asked them to call the parents. Maybe the principal will ask to, you know, help with, the calling of the par the parents and so forth, but uh, but we could do a district, you know, uh, parent link type of thing to notify the parents and let them know that this is what's happening Pick next week them. and put the schedule. You I'm know, just saying for the parents that don't have internet access. You know, yes. Yes. They can get a call or something to mm -hmm. remind them that this is the information so they can yes. pick up their work for their kids. Yes, it's a good idea. Any other questions that you all might have? I just want to say on behalf of the board, all of y'all that had a hand in putting this together, I understand it's something that was not prepared for. It took a lot of time to put together. And the thing that I'm most impressed with is that everything that you all put forth in this plan is in the best interest of our staff and students. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, it's a team effort. I, I mean, I know you all say it all the time, but we are very, I'm just going to say it, we are very, very blessed to have the staff that we have. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ferriel. Uh, Mr. Rick Ferriel is going to talk a little bit about the food distribution that we're going to commence on uh, Monday, March 23rd. Yes. Thank you. It helps the process. Uh, Madam President, Members of the board, uh, Dr. Science, and everybody in attendance here, uh, again, I want to thank you for taking your time and creating this plan and assisting, allowing us to make this plan for our students and our community. I'll go ahead and start real briefly and real simply here. The first thing we, the Department of Child Nutrition Services has already met, uh, uh, finalized this, this uh, crisis prevent, with the crisis prevention team, finalized the plan here, basically going to be a drive-through system where parents and students are not going to go, go into the building, all right? They're going to pick up the food on the outside on a uh, pretty much like a, like a drive-through, all right? Special diets will be given to them as well. And right now I'm just giving you the ins and outs of how this program is going to be uh, run, all right? And I'll go ahead and go into the campuses, the dates, the times, and uh, the... Men, not the menu, but the breakfast and the lunch uh, schedule at the campuses. All right. So it's going to be for a total of 10 days. All right. Uh, it was already approved by TDA and USDA. Uh, we will have special diets as well. All right. To so make sure that, that students that have special diets will be also taken into consideration in this matter. And it will be for all members of the community from zero, ages zero to 18 years of age. All right, uh, how will we know who's, who went and got their lunch or breakfast? There'll be a simple tally sheet, not gonna be asking for IDs, not going to be asking for driver's licenses or social security numbers. All right, so it's gonna be a very simple tally sheet. Uh, next thing, I'll go ahead and, are there any questions there before I move on? Okay. The next one, if you look at your, if you look at the, the the sheet that I gave you, it's based on this sheet is based obviously on our school summer option program, meals program. Since it is uh, within the school calendar that was already approved, uh, TDA has allowed us to go ahead and get compensated. Uh, and I'll go ahead and begin with the three high schools at the top. All right, on the left, high schools will be La Jolla High School. 
uh, Palm View High School, and of course, uh, Juarez High School, which will probably have uh, the most amount of staff members working out of those campuses. Middle schools, we have four middle schools. And by the way, we did this be through area as best as we could, not by, by campus, but which campus has covered most of the area, all right? Uh, Chavez Middle School, Dr. Science Middle School, Ann Richards Middle School, J.D. Salinas Middle School, and then our three elementaries, uh, Escandon, which is south of the expressway, uh, for Dice, which is in the Sullivan City area, which we're trying to reach as many as we can, like I said, we talked about area, and then Zapata, Emiliano Zapata, which is on the opposite end of uh, what is Lincoln on the 107 area. It will be a total of 10 days from March 3rd, March 23rd, excuse me, to April 3rd. Days of service will be Monday through Friday, like regular school days. Breakfast time will be 7.30 to 9. And then our lunch time will be from 10.30 to 12. Are there any other questions? I, I have, a, I have a, two questions. Uh, I'm seeing here uh, the, the Peña Elementary area, they're north of Peña. Is there possible maybe you can look into it to see Excellent that you can become point. a site? Uh, we did discuss that, Mr. Cantu. And uh, when we begin on Monday, if there is a need, TDA and the USDA have allowed us to make a little adjustment. And if there is a big need, which, which there probably will be, we'll go ahead and add another, they'll let us add a campus or delete a campus. All right, so good question and good point. And we the other on. one is, I know that there's a lot of people that don't, you know, have transportation, maybe look into Meals on Wheels, that way, you know, like Puebla de Palmas, you can drive around with a bus and make, and, you know, make drop-offs there for the kids that are not able to make it to Puebla de we, we did do a little discussing about that we have 20 buses, and we need to coordinate maybe not with the 20 buses. I know but, that was something you know, that was brought up in the meeting, because I suggested right. that this morning when uh, Jane was talking, but she said that there were such strict guidelines that um, yes, where uh, in order for it to be reimbursable meals, we have we do have to follow Texas Department of Agriculture procedures. This is an approved procedure for a reimbursable meal. I know that there's um, a lot of different ways, but the procedure that we're using is that procedure that is allowed by TDA, so they can be reimbursable for this program. But I'm hoping that the state will see the need. And that they will change their way. Maybe, maybe I, there will be a change. I, I think if, if they're following the summer the summer yeah. uh, feeding program, it should be allowed. I know that McCall and ISD is doing it at this point. Yeah, and they had more stops and just looking into that, like just like our summer schedule, we have more stops than this. I'm saying because well, you know that there's there's there's. But they're still they're still uh, in schools. It's still in schools though. The yes. the meals on wheels. Yes. More locations, you more locations. More yes. locations. Well, if, we, if that, if yeah. that comes They'll up allow in more the locations. course of the day, yeah. we're already Just yes. closer to them. They will allow more locations. Correct. We're trying these, and then if there's an additional need, Correct. we'll do a waiver for more locations. Correct. But Correct. this is how what we're starting out with. Correct. And just to clarify, these are locations, so elementary children can pick up their meals at the high school, at the middle schools, and everywhere, right? So and just to clarify places. that. Uh, and we're allowed to feed zero to 18 years of age. So whatever kids show up that age, they will be given the meal. Are we getting the message through Channel 17 and maybe through progress times and all that? Stuff? We have different uh, ways that we're gonna communicate this to parents. Uh, we did not talk about a newspaper, but maybe that's, a, that's something that we need to do also. Right, thank you. I guess that's just the, the, the concern because getting the information out there. Share your communication plans to everyone that way they can hear it too. Oh. I can give her the mic. She can come to the podium. Uh, Mr. Mr. Moni was just going to talk a little bit about attendance <laughs> and then we'll let uh, Blanca Cantu talk about our communication plan. Good evening. Just uh, to touch briefly on the student attendance, we will be submitting a waiver so that the district is allowed to count students present for ADA purposes. And this waiver will be granted as long as we can uh, show that we are providing instruction to the students at home. And we were able to do that thanks to, thanks to the plan that was created by our curriculum and instruction department, Ms. Magda Villarreal and her team. So that, that was, that's the update on, on the student attendance for now. Any questions? Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have a district nurse and then Lucens. Ms. Morales has also given uh, an update on how our nurses are going to support during the closure. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, our nurses do have the medications in their cabinets for those students that were taking medications regularly. So the plan that we've come up with is uh, we will have the nurses come in on Monday as well. What they will be doing is it will only be RNs and LVNs at this point. Uh, what they'll be doing is getting the medications ready for uh, shipment. They will get them in bags, they will get them uh, with addresses on them, and our PD department has agreed to deliver those medications. So they will be contacting parents and letting them know. Sometimes the parents do not want the medication and they want us to discard it. In that case, it will be paperwork that needs to be filled out that that medication will be discarded. And uh, every campus will have a pack, and that pack will have uh, another paperwork stating that it was delivered. So that's what we're going to be doing with the medications because we still do have all the medications for the rest of the month. We want to make sure that the students have access to those when they're out. Any questions? I don't have a question. I have a suggestion. Do, are we going to have uh, maybe nurses that uh, on on site when it comes to on the employees coming in to work and stuff, so we can monitor uh, temperatures, at temperatures least. and stuff like that, to making sure they're they're. We can. That's a recommendation that we'll talk more about and consider. That's not something that we have planned so far. Just uh, but, uh, we are also aware that we do have a lot of employees that are immunocompromised, and uh, we do need to take that into consideration, including some of my nurses. In that case, we would have to uh, review that Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, there's going to be a communication plan while we are in closure. Um, I know I shared this uh, this morning uh, with the team. So we're going to have a communications team set up that's going to consist of the superintendent, the emergency management coordinator, our district uh, chief of police, our district nurse, uh, myself, and the six, uh, five super assistant superintendents. So that's the communications team that will be set up in order for us to communicate with parents and community. Um, in that, with that said, um, every department is going to take care of their department's needs. So if the if department has questions, they'll advise their assistant superintendent or superintendent of those needs or questions so that the team can either uh, evaluate and see if we need to send out something to parents or to staff at that point. We're also going to set up a response team. So there's going to be a response team for both platforms, community and staff. Um, we're going to set up an email, is, which is going to be community info at La Hoya ISD. If community has questions, they can address it to, to, the, to that email. And if staff has questions, will be staff info. So those will be set up and I will be receiving those um, emails. I will be forwarding those emails to the department um, they have questions about or um, have their phones available or information available so that I can share that with them. So those are going to be the response team. Um, we will have um, district updates uh, twice a day on our social media platforms and once on our district website um, based on need. So we will have a morning uh, update at 10 a.m. and an evening uh, update at 5 a.m. We want to educate the community as to those two times they're going to be seeing updates from, from our district. And so we want to keep them informed. I know that uh, social media has been uh, playing an integral part in, in this whole COVID-19 uh, procedures. And, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people seek social media for information, and that's going to be our best tool to communicate with our, with our community and staff. Mm -hmm. So um, these platforms of, of, of uh, communication will consist of, if we need to communicate with staff, we will be sending district distributions to them, um, communicating what needs to be communicated to them. And if we need to communicate with our community, then those um, will be shared on our district website and social media outlets. As, as, as also, if um, these will be presented and, and sent to our uh, media outlets for Channel 5 um, and press, print, digital. So if we do need to keep our community informed, they will also have that information. Um, there's going to be an advertising campaign as to instruction and lunch schedules, locations and times so that parents can know when they can pick up their lunch, when they can pick up their um, breakfast um, and what times and what locations. So we will make sure that those are consistent so that the community knows that that's a consistent location for those pickup times. Um, we will also share the instruction time, uh, the instructional uh, resources that will be available from Ms. Magda Villarreal um, so that they can know 
where to access those instructions and we will do develop those videos as to how to access the information so that the instruction can still be taking place at the homes. Um, um, the designated spokesperson as to COVID-19 and the whole closure will be myself. I will be the only one um, uh, addressing any of the situations because we want to make sure that we have one clear message and that message uh, co is consistent throughout. We don't want um, anybody else uh, saying anything as long as we have or I have the response team's approval, I will go ahead and, and do interviews or anything like that if it need be. Um, we will be doing, uh, like I mentioned before, the press releases update for the community to know about and uh, campuses social media sites are going to play uh, a, a big role too so they have been we have addressed the principals uh, before this meeting that they need to have those uh, credentials ready in case of their PR rep is not available the principal is going to be able to update and share our updates district updates in their social media outlet so that the message is clear do all our campuses have no. Yes, for the most part, all of the campuses have a social media outlet, at least a Facebook page. And then uh, others have Twitter and additional uh, Instagram. And of course, we do have the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. So those will be shared with the um, campuses that will, and the campuses know to share the information so that we maintain the great communication with our community. Any questions on the communications plan? Is, is there any, I know you mentioned an email uh, for questions on the, on the community. Is there any way we can have maybe a phone number? The, Our phone uh, number is gonna be the public relations um, gonna number. Be to, okay. It's gonna any be questions? the 2585, yes, 323. Um, we'll share that with whatever we need to communicate with staff and or community. That's gonna be the phone number that they're gonna be calling, <laughs> email and, and I know there's a lot of information going back and forth and you all have you know, done a tremendous job with communicating to the public everything that's going on. And I thank you for that. You know, it's just something that caught us off guard. And, you know, I think you all have done an excellent job. It is a team here. effort. I mean, we're working as a, a big team. So uh, we're trying our best and we're learning as we go because this is some, something new to us. But nonetheless, we want to keep our community informed. Thank you, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that we did impress <coughs> upon principals this afternoon in our meeting with them is to keep the different the different methods of communication separate and talk about the importance of uh, parents have the parent and community response email and all messages to them will be through our social media platforms different than our staff will have their own staff response email and district distribution so that we do not miscommunicate uh, with any group we ask the principals the importance of keeping those separate methods of communication separate. Sure. And uh, if you refer to the COVID-19 plan of action on page three, uh, our district is in phase five, so I'll just read that. Just as a reminder that our school district cancels classes, all educational process is online, and student packets will be provided. All students and staff stay home. Essential employees report to work. District's child nutrition service will provide meals at designated locations and designated times. So we are in phase five. Uh, Chief, anything else? I know uh, we pretty much call upon everyone. Um, I shared with them this morning that any information or packets that they were creating as the days go by uh, for them to uh, uh, make copies and share with all of you. Just so we know what's occurring. Remind, uh, good evening, uh, Vice President of the Board. And I just to remind the community that we are operating under uh, a crisis. So we are under a, oper operating under the NIMS National Incident Management System. Our incident commander is our superintendent of schools. So we have six phases that we can transition into, depending on the recommendations from local, county, state, and federal officials. So this plan allows us to move into any other phases. Uh, once we get recommendations from uh, any of those entities. Uh, it's important for us, and we did review this with principals as well as with the district crisis team, because as uh, we continue to monitor uh, the situation and get information from any of the agencies that we're in contact, we might need to move up or down on this plan. We might need to at some time 
hopefully not, but go to phase six, um, and hopefully move up to phase four, or maybe skip phase four and go to phase three. But it's important for all of us to know this because this is how we're gonna be making adjustments based on the information that's out there. Is Doc, there I just wanted, else? I just wanted to I just wanted to thank everyone that put all this together thank yes. you for all the time and, and I know that while others are at home with, with their families, yet they're here working. So first of all, thank you for that because you're doing that for our students, our parents, our entire staff and and, 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 and for all of us here. But I, I think that if there can be an action between us here, Doc, to what would be a worst case scenario and what would we be facing so that if we do get to meet because I know you all are meeting, but if we get to meet, because there's even the possibility that we could even meet over the phone, if there is a plan there, because until when is enough going to be enough for the people that are up front fighting this or actually helping us get, I know it's hard to say that it's maybe one day, hopefully we can go to level four and not level six or whatever, no, but for us to be able to hopefully better it, but if not, what would we do in that case so that we're able to prepare and, and have that? as an action well one of the things that the uh, commissioner Marath talks about every day when we have the conference call is that it is a very fluid situation but he has talked to us today especially he talked about the possibility of extending school closure and like i said we have sample communication to share with community just in case we have to go to an extended school closure so is there is that possibility there's also the possibility that we would go to phase six, mm -hmm. which phase six would mean that uh, no one is on call. There is no essential staff working anymore. That's that the only case staff case. working would be our police department. That's that that for our district is the worst case scenario. So in that case, what would happen to the kids, you know, to is it it, just well, I, I personally think these are uncharted waters. I mean, I, I, I yes. want to thank you, Dr. Science, the administration, our crisis team, Ms. Villarreal's team. I mean, y'all are doing outstanding, working tirelessly during your spring break. But I think this, these are uncharted waters, and we yes. do this together. Like Marta says, we're a great team, So yes. and it shows. And I really want to thank you for all the work that you put in, into this plan. Thank you. It's like we told our principals this afternoon. It is uncharted waters. These are new things for all of us but I think everybody's doing a really, really good job. Uh, I know our parents are gonna be looking towards, for, towards us, not just for education for their kids, but they're gonna be looking for us for meals and for information. And uh, I'm very proud of the staff because they have prepared for all three, how to continue education, how to feed our kids, and how to provide information to parents. So I know that everyone's gonna to continue to do the very, very best job. Mm -hmm. And I thank the team that's here and the leadership at the campus. I know I'm very grateful to have staff like this and I'm grateful to have a supportive board like you all. And I know that we're all going, we are all going to do the very best that we can do to serve our kids during this uh, unchartered time and uh, a time when you know a lot of our parents are nervous and are scared but i think that we have the plans we have the staff and i think we're going to do a good job through it all so yes. thank you all and i think we need to address that as a community we need to stay very calm listen to instructions being issued to us by local state federal government and y'all are doing such a good job planning that we're, we're all calm because we have a good plan in place and we are transmitting that calmness and that peace to our community. So above all is not think worst case scenario and just think we've got this. Just yes. follow instructions. Yes. And, think, and that's a good way to end it. We've got this. And I think as a, as a, <laughs> as a community, all we can say, you know, ask for patience at this point. Like I said, the staff has been doing an excellent job, but don't forget that your safety is also our priority. So make sure you do things and be careful out there because I know that, you know, a lot of people are panicking, but it's nothing to panic. I think we're gonna be okay. We mm -hmm. just require everybody to come together, a lot of communication, a lot of prayer. And I think for the form, for, for, for the foremost, I think everything will be all right and we're, we're in the right path. Thank you, Dr. We're just gonna navigate Thank through it together. <laughs> yes. Thank you all. I know earlier today I, I uh, extended my appreciation, but I want to also commend all of you for your long, tiring hours working together as a team um, getting our phone calls uh, 
as we needed answers, and I know things are unfolding on an hourly basis, but I also want to extend the gratitude and appreciation for those that are listening from all departments, to our administration, to our leadership, to our teachers that are going to uh, just take this torch and carry us through all of this. And uh, we're going to get this, just like Ms. Ochoa said. We're going to be fine. Why? Because La Jolla ISD is the place to be, and we're going to shine bright when all of this is over. Thank you to everybody that's here tonight. Be safe, and uh, we will adjourn at... 6.58. Thank you.